and welcome to Dataversity Talks, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers around data. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Diamond Nwanko, the Senior Engineer at Slalom Build. Ready to share your knowledge and network with your data peers? Join us in San Diego this June for the Data Governance and Information Quality Conference. Five days packed full of new perspectives, new colleagues, and new approaches are yours when you register at dgiq2023west.dataversity.net. Lock in early bird savings when you register by May 5th. We'll see you there. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kevin. I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity, and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who can help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. And today we are joined by Diamond Wonko, the senior data engineer at Slalom Build. And normally this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Diamond, <laughs> hello and welcome. Hey, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Thanks so much for being here. So Okay, so tell me, so you're the senior data engineer at Slalom Build. So yes. what is Slalom Build and what is it that you do? Yeah, um, I guess like the best way that I can kind of say what Slalom Build is, it's it's a modern consulting company. So we kind of specialize, build specifically, um, specializes in like building solutions that are usually cloud-based. So most of my job, consists of some type of database migration, something to that effect. And that's what I do for various clients. Um, and sometimes I get to work on internal slalom projects, which is always cool to grow and like transform the business. So that's that's awesome. That's very cool. So I bet you're doing a lot of that with digital transformation happening, a lot of transitioning. Yeah, a lot of that. I actually uh, just got done with one client meeting before this. So yeah, it's always uh, moving. I love it. So so tell me, Diamond. So when you were just a very, very young person in elementary school, did you say, I'm going to grow up to be an engineer in a consultant company? Not at all. <laughs> Not at <laughs> what all. was the dream? Tell me, what was the dream? Actually, when I was six, I wanted to be a comedian. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, I loved making people laugh. I loved finding ways to tell stories that was always engaging for people. Um, mm. And uh, like it or not, my mom was a comedy fan, so she would watch uh, some of the like Eddie Murphy tapes and different things like that. I probably should have been sneaking in and watching them, but hey, it helped me. <laughs> I love that. Uh, who's your favorite comedian? Oh man, Dave Chappelle. He's he's oh, like up yeah. there when it comes to storytelling and really um, making comedy uh, practical, funny, as well as uh, you learn something from it. Like, I love him and uh, other com uh, comedians like D.L. Hughley, who always find a way to tie in today's topics, whether that's political or what have you, and make that something, tense situations funny. Um, that's always been a huge, like, uh, thing for me, is finding ways to take situations that may not be funny um, and find a way to get the comedy out of it so people are, are able to release and laugh and not be bogged down by bad things oh I love that that's a great skill to to have uh yeah. and I do love Dave Chappelle I watched a lot of his uh, specials <laughs> yes <laughs> he's great so uh, so okay so tell me so you wanted to be a comedian so what changed How, where where did you go from there and you know in school what did you start like developing a passion for as you grew up um, honestly, I was just one of those 
kids that did great uh, academically, but I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't until I was around 14 that my dad uh, got me my first, well, was trying to help me get my first little summer job. And I was selected for the St. Louis Science Center. Uh, and they had this uh, program called Youth Exploring Science. And essentially what it did was expose uh, inner city youth in St. Louis to STEM fields. So I got to do hands-on uh, projects to learn about engineering, what was engineering. Because prior, from, prior to me entering the ES program, I had never heard of the word engineering. It never came up in school, never met an engineer, saw an engineer. So I never knew this career field even existed. And uh, needless to say, the Science Center, I was in that program for four years, uh, all four years of it. Um, from there, I got accepted into Rolla, Missouri. At the time, it was Missouri University. Uh, well, now it's Missouri University of Science and Technology, but before it was University of Missouri at Rolla. Got accepted there uh, my junior year of high school for my engineering degree, and it just kind of went from there. Wow, that's very cool. I love yeah. that, um, that you were involved in science so young and, and outside of school. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. very, very cool. So, so, um, so you got a degree in engineering mm -hmm. and then, and then what, where did, what was your job out of school? Oh man. Um, my, my first, actually, before I had my first job out of school, I had five internships and co-ops throughout college and yeah. Cause I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that engineering was fun. I was one of those crazy people who wanted to dual major in like industrial engineering and chemical engineering. I would highly not recommend that because <laughs> you won't have a life. Uh, Cause man, it was tough. So I yeah. ended up dropping the chemical engineering because through those uh, five internships, I was able to see that what really spoke to me as a person was process improvement and mm -hmm. finding ways to like get the needle moving, finding ways to like work with operators and manufacturing processes to drive process efficiency um, as well as quality. So that kind of catapulted me into aerospace manufacturing where I spent the bulk of my career um, in the process improvement and quality sector. Um, really driving um, like AS9100 standards, ISO 9001, doing those type of things. So that was like my first love, trying to understand how can you improve quality as a product, uh, quality of machinery, quality of processes as a whole, and just seeing um, how multi-layered quality is. It's not just this gatekeeper thing before you know, something goes out the door. It's like, hey, is it a quality product? <laughs> but trying to keep it yeah. ingrained in the product. Oh, I really like that. Um, and we'll get back to that in, in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But so tell me, you know, then, um, then what's next in your in your career? How did you how did you evolve and really get into uh, into data and and into the current role that you're in? Um, I would like to shout out one of my managers, and her name was Laquanda Hoskins, and I worked at Arconic in Davenport, Iowa. And one of the projects that she assigned me was uh, to build a dashboard. So we can look and better track downtime. I was like, what's a dashboard? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> and um, what essentially happened was I learned SQL. I learned a lot of different. Um, so I built out this, this uh, dashboard in SharePoint. So I learned SQL. Um, mm -hmm. I learned access. I learned a lot of different tools that weren't traditional engineering tools. Um, as well as like that dashboard visualization aspect of it um, and trying to figure out what's the best way to communicate um, our, our data storytelling at, at this point. I think that's what it's now called data storytelling. Um, and in that, I had to learn how to get people uh, who looked at technology as something that's taking their jobs 
as a friend. Um, majority of the operators that I worked with, they were definitely terrified of it. They didn't want anything to do with this technology um, because they just felt like it's just going to take my job. And trying to get them to see, no, it's just a tool for you to do to do your job better. Honestly, it's a tool to help you see like, what are you actually doing and how can we capitalize on these good practices that you have so that other people can perform the same way that you do. And from there, um, I essentially did more projects that did uh, data visualization that led to us understanding how are we performing as a company. So um, started using tools like OSI Pi, which is like another real-time data visualization tool. Um, and I became the lead for the Arconic site that I was working at. And from there, ended up um, going to a data engineering or data analytics boot camp. Sorry, I said that bad. I'm going to run it back. So I ended up <laughs> going to a data analytics boot camp. And that showed me Python and different scripting tools. And from there, I was able to land my first data engineering job and be able to learn what's a data pipeline. How does these things flow together? Um, because I was so segmented to one aspect of it, which is just, okay, you have the data, tell the story of it. I didn't know what was before that. Like, how do you get these data from these different sources? How do you make it make sense? How do you normalize this data? Um, none of that I knew. So that boot camp really helped me understand what 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 happened before we make it all pretty. <laughs> With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launch pad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Ah, oh, I like it. And um, so then, so then, um, and that eventually led you to slalom, right? Yeah, eventually led me to slalom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I know, so, so talking about the quality again. So I know just because the way I met you is through, um, you were recommended as having given one of the best data quality talks, um, oh, one of our colleagues that, you know, I've <laughs> ever heard. So, <laughs> so we invited you to talk about data quality. So it sounds like, you know, that initial um, passion that you found in engineering of, of monitoring the quality and why I want to come back to this is uh, you also apply today. Is that true? Yeah. 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 Definitely understanding um, it's a little different uh, from traditional manufacturing and how quality was applied there. But there's still, when you look at how quality has evolved, you still have to have that base layer of audits, understanding what your process is, building out um, your current state to your future state. All of that still exists. But now mm -hmm. let's add this twist of data into it. So what does data quality look like? And yeah. how do you drive that? And um man once I learned about the different um different applications of data quality or even um I think back then with uh Larry English it was just like information quality management or something to that effect um just learning that and just like wow this is this is really impactful and it, it will help drive the future just understanding how do we apply quality to data and like get those same insights, but have it being a repeatable thing and making sure that now it's a, a data downtime movement when you look at data quality. So how can we make sure there's no data disruptions and different things like that? So I didn't know that quality even existed in this data space and finding that was just like, I think I found my thing. <laughs> So cool. I, I love that. I love that story of how those all those pieces came together. And it sounds like just from initially what you were still talking about, you do use comedy in, in your work. <laughs> and for the people yeah. part of it. 
<laughs> which, which is, uh, yeah. which is great. I, I do think we need more laughter in, in everything that we do. <laughs> yeah. Um, to quote the Joker, why so serious? Like everything doesn't have to be, <laughs> there's a time and a place for it, but you know, it's yeah. okay to build relationships and having that as a basis for it. Um, it doesn't always have to be, um, straight black and white when engaging with clients or operators or whomever like finding that way to become relatable and approachable even if it's using comedy I did that a lot with the operators so the guards will come down and they saw me as a friend versus someone telling them what to do very very cool that is really cool I love that so um so tell me, Diamond, so working with data so much now, what is your definition of data and how do you work with it? Uh, expand on it a little bit more. Yeah, oh, man, data is this obvious thing where it's, it's like per, per user almost, mm -hmm. right? Um, because prior to coming on to slalom or even a job that I worked to prior to slalom and seeing what data infrastructure look like um i just thought it was making sure that we didn't have any no values i thought it was just like the data being consistent and does it look pretty in you know access table or excel chart but now it's like okay i'm building out this code there may not be um a pretty presentation to it right now i'm doing straight back end data um, so what does it look like to have quality in that? Um, so now it's like, does my code actually get the results that we need? Um, is it helping the people who are in the um, web development space or who are using this data day to day to make effective business decisions? Is this leading them in the right direction? So that's how I view data these days. Um, I still have that the same sense of making sure that when it comes to a presentation layer or something to that effect, that it will make uh, make or facilitate uh, great business decision making as well as um, support the business in a positive way. I still have that vantage point, but right now it's like, does this line of code functionally work? Is this scalable? Um, Will it break if we go from this environment to that environment? Um, so that's how I view data these days. Very interesting. I really like it. Uh, and as uh, you work with a lot of data, especially with a lot of customers' data, right? As yeah. in a consultant role, um, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and, and why? Oh man, uh, I honestly see it decreasing. I see it being something where um, thanks to things like this chat GPT and auto GPT where these uh, tools are coming in that eliminate various inefficiencies within data as a whole or tech as a whole. So I see this, I see the evolution of this being more um, in a data observability role, somewhere between that uh, data observ observability and mm -hmm. data governance. I see that being kind of like the future state where it's like monitoring these processes, making sure um, everything is consistent, making sure it's reliable, the data is trustworthy, there is a source of truth, and having specific procedures and policies in place. And people, of course, to ensure that these things flow um, seamlessly. But mm -hmm. I think the days of having um, many people manage small aspects of the project mm -hmm. may be gone. I see it being one person with more depth mm -hmm. of how processes work than mm -hmm. a lot of people with breath. I see it like alternating from a breadth-based industry to a depth-based industry. Mm. And I like that you put a lot of importance there on data governance um, uh, and the need for data governance. So yeah. do you see your customers, customers struggling with that? I know we see a lot of people who still struggle to wrap their head around it. They think 
data governance is a dirty word. It's kind of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's it just about adhering to laws and, you know, yeah. but it's so much more than that. It is. And I think like that's the next step. It, it's kind of takes me back to um, when I was working with those operators and trying to teach them these new things are your friend. Um, I think it's going back to that where um, there was a mentality of like these new tools or technologies are exposing us. It's exposing what we're doing wrong versus like these tools or technologies making us more efficient. Um, so I think once that clicks for various industries, then we will see more adaptability, like adaptability when it comes to data quality, data governance, and data management as a whole. I like it. So um, if somebody wants to get into uh, a career in data management, what do you, what advice would you give them? I would say the biggest piece of advice I would give anyone is hone in on those transferable skills. Uh, right now we're seeing a huge pivot uh, with people who are, you know, walking into their second career. Most people are leaving, you know, I've seen a lot of teachers leaving, nurses, and going into tech. Uh, so I think the biggest thing is honing in on those skills because they bring a level of um, diversity that we are not accustomed to. So, and it brings a, a refreshing perspective. And one of the things I often tell people who are looking at data is like, you have a lot of the same skill sets. It may just be worded different or given a different title in this data space, but those tools and those technologies that you learned are still applicable. So I think finding that space where it's like, okay, I'm a nurse, how can I switch to data manage or do something in data management? Still in healthcare, or I wanna do something completely in a different field. Finding mm -hmm. that way where those skills and the tools that you use mm -hmm. are um, transferable and you lean into them. Um, you don't have to wash away your past life or your past career just to become someone in tech. Take that and build upon it I think if people see it as that way versus like I'm starting completely over, um, I think that would help more people see what data is as well as land good, good jobs with data too because you're able to bring your full self um, into this space. I like that advice a lot. That that makes a lot of sense because you're right. I mean, and uh, so it's, it, and, it, and just to kind of, summarize so it sounds like you know it it the it sounds like there's a lot of follow your passion right so yeah you so that you can use the skills and passion that you that you have from current experience to uh, refocus it in a career in in data management absolutely absolutely uh, I love that so much such a great message so diamond so tell me if somebody wanted to find you or or hire you uh, or hire can slalom and and get a hold of slalom, how would they slalom build and how would they go about uh, reaching out to uh, solicit services from slalom build? Yeah, so um, for slalom, check out slalom.com and that's S is in Sam, L is in Lima, A is in Apple, L is in Lima, O is in Opal, M is in Mary. Dot com. That's slow. For me, I am on LinkedIn, Diamond Wonkwo. <laughs> so um, my name and the spelling will be on there uh, to connect with me there. But if you want to reach out to Slalom, I would definitely recommend the corporate website um, just because I don't I don't know who could be the go to person for that. Sure. Um, but for me, I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and we will, we'll post that, we'll post that link uh, on the website with the podcast and we'll have the spelling of your name because it's not as you would expect. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is definitely <laughs> not. Cause like when I got married, I pronounced it wrong for at least a good month. So I'm right there with you guys struggling. So <laughs> I got it right now. 
<laughs> I love that. Um, that's 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 awesome. It's it's beautiful. Well, Diamond, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. For all the listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest podcast and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational articles, blogs, and webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Mm-hmm.